So today we're going to talk about how IP Fabric is used for closed loop automation. What do we mean by that? Well, let's let's dig into a bit of how uh, network automation typically is done. You start in the obvious way with a network or more than one network. It depends. Most most uh, enterprise networks are in fact a collection of networks and so need to uh, uh, when application services are deployed, you need to make changes across multiple environments. So that's really important. Then you, what you'll have is some sort of automation platform that acts on that network. Uh, that platform might be, uh, it might be a, a software defined network. It might be um, a scripting environment, it, or it might be a low code. It, any variety of, of network automation, um, this scenario will apply. And essentially what that automation platform is doing is pushing to the, to the network um, either policy or configuration information uh, in order to make changes in that environment. Now, it has to generate the configuration of the policy from somewhere. So typically what it will use is uh, a series of templates. Now these templates may be in the form of text files, or they may just be policy in uh, the SDN GUI, for example. But that template is the uh, the structure of the uh, the configuration or the policy change that's going to be pushed into that network. But the the template is great, but it needs to be rendered with information that's specific to the change you're making. And here's where the, the uh, interesting piece comes because. What you need to be able to do is, is take some variable information from a data source. That data source represents the intended state of your network. So you have an intended state database, which holds the values, which then your automation platform will use in the templates to render that configuration into the network. Now that intended state database, again, can take a number of different forms. It might also be uh, part of your SDM platform, but it might, also, might be a, a, a CMDB or um, a specifically a source of truth database, something like a, a NetBox or a Nautobot, for example. And this is the basic flow, I suppose, for any, any network automation. You're taking that data, Using, rendering it into a template and then deploying that into your network in order to deliver a service. But as you can see, we've got a big gap over this side and this is where, where our closed loop comes in. Because what we need to be able to do is, well, let's write the challenges down. We have three main challenges, okay? So the first thing we have to consider is initial population of that intended state database that needs to reflect the network um, at the point that it's created so that the automation is able to, uh, to generate configuration that makes sense. Because we all know that you're not gonna be able to, to put the um, network automation into a greenfield network with there being no other network around it. There is no such thing. Every network is, is a brownfield these days. So that initial population piece is super important. Once you've done that, you then have to consider that there's actually going to be a number of places where you're going to make changes. So um, you might make changes in the actual intended state database here. Um, you might make a change in the automation process here. You might make changes in the template. Or if you're still um, doing some element of manual work, and especially with the troubleshooting space, you may end up making manual changes in the network themselves itself. And of course, all of those changes have to be um, validated and verified that they are indeed um, working as you expect them to. And so you can't go through and, and put those checks in, in one of those places, you have to cover it with all of them. So that's super important. And of course, as a result of those changes, things will um, be updated in the network itself. That network um, needs to be documented after the changes have been made. 
And the best way of doing that, of course, is automation. So the third challenge really then is about maintaining our intended state database once things have been pushed into the network and once we have um, our automation platform in place. If changes are gonna be made throughout, we need to be sure that we can echo those changes back into our intended state database. So it's really maintenance is our third, our third issue. The way to address all of those challenges is by filling this big gap in the middle here um, with something that's able to uh, carry information from the network back into the intended state database for the initial population, but then also once other changes have been made to, to do the same thing and to validate on the way through that that is indeed um, what we want to do. And this is where IP Fabric steps in. So I'm going to choose a space for and we'll put IP Fabric here. What IP Fabric is doing, obviously, is pulling the data from the network, is modeling the network and understanding exactly how the behavior of the actual network um, is. And then we can use the information that's in IP Fabric to um, report back whether or not we want to make changes into the intended state database here. So we may want to, for example, look and see which new devices have been added to the network or what configuration has been changed in the network and say, actually, when I've, when I've got that data, I want to push that information back into the intended state database. Or I may not. I may decide that actually um, that change should never have happened and I need to revert it, in which case you might then close the loop directly into the automation um, and revert that change and, and close the loop that way. So there are two, two aspects to that. Now the other side effect of course of having IP Fabric in the network means that you've got extra benefits of automated documentation. Um, you're able also to push that data into other platforms. Your monitoring, for example, your CMDB and so on. Um, and so that then gives you uh, that full closed loop uh, scenario. And so you can see IP Fabric here has formed a, an in integral part of that closed loop automation um, that completes the picture uh, for your network operations.